Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome to the channel. Thanks for taking a moment out of your guys' day to watch this video that I made for you. Before we start the video though, I would like to take a moment to ask you to please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe button, and notification button. And if you've already been a subscriber, maybe the join button. I'd also like to thank English Trainer Online for becoming my newest channel member. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. Today we're going to talk about a Ubuntu based distribution that is touting itself to be basically the rolling release of Ubuntu. all right and this is it right here this is what we're talking about it's called rhino linux 2023.1 which is their very first version uh the concept of rhino linux was actually uh came from aj which is aj strong who if you look at the bottom he's a desktop lead and founder but he also is a part of the development team for i believe ubuntu touch uh i i read that somewhere uh anyhow he's he's been developing a lot you know other of other applications and stuff like that so development is not something new for him he's also brought a couple people to the team and what drew my attention honestly is when it said it's a rolling release of ubuntu because realistically, it's kind of counterintuitive to what Ubuntu is known for. Ubuntu is known for being a newer to Linux user uh, for stability purposes. Also, uh, they were the first ones to grasp the concept of making a usable desktop environment appealing to the masses. And so it's known for its stability and its ability to actually... Uh, hold and maintain packages quite well so being that it's a rolling release rolling release is basically a like the the only way that they could do it is because we all know canonical is driven towards snaps and they approve all the packages that go into their system so any new fixes of this that and another are going to happen at a very slow pace a non-rolling release place which means that rolling release would be like latest and greatest right away uh, kind of like your arch so that means that they would have to implement an AOR style packaging system, which they did using Packstall. But what, furthermore than that, they actually maintain their own repository, and it's based sort of like Nix Packages, which is a community repo. So people can upload and maintain packages of their own accord on there and post them on there, and it will become available through Packstall to Rhino Linux. Now, PSA warning to anybody who's new and thinking oh but this is ubuntu based i'm going to try it that actually could cause breakages of your system as well because as arch is experiencing right now uh with grub that they just recently experienced with grub um you know packages were pushed testing wasn't done so well and you know it broke everybody's grub so that's one of the flip sides of being a rolling release is that you te you could have those kind of accidents happen. Here it goes on to state in their thing that this style of repository means it's sneaking a blatant malware into the repos a lot harder because many more team reviewers are looking at it and this is true. But also bad code could get put in there and create breaking as well that is not intended to be malware. So that's just a little PSA. So at any instance, that is kind of a cool concept has a little pause for concern but very minor i mean i've been using arch for a long time and i've broken my stuff a couple of times but a lot of it was mainly with me doing it in the beginning yes i downloaded packages that broke but i've learned to watch out for them so at any instance the desktop as you can see here has been completely uh revamped it's xfce but it looks good we'll take a look at that in a minute it's also perfect for developers like i said he is a developer himself outside of distro development so uh i think that if he could feel comfortable in it that most other developers might feel comfortable in it uh what i would like to do is so let's take a look at the um, 
uh, no, hold it. Let's go back here. Uh, let's go to Rhino Package, um, which is basically, um, it is a packaging system that encompasses. It's a, it's a front end for Packstall that they've kind of created that will make Packstall scrape as Packstall does. It'll it'll you know check for uh, flat packs, snaps, app images, apt, any package manager that you have installed on your system and enabled. It will check them for any updates. That's really what Rhino Linux or Rhino uh, Package Manager does. Now, if you go to the documentation on it, like the wiki for it, and you go to here to Rhino Package, uh, you can see right here is the syntax for Rhino Packaging right here, which is the very same syntax as you would for apt or DNF, which is update, install, remove, yada, yada, search, whatever. However, though, what's flexible about it is on this very bottom line here, you can actually type in RPK or Rhino-Package for it to actually call your commands. So just bear in witness. So now let's go ahead and take a look at it. This desktop, I'm just gonna say it. The coloring and the theming of it is looks like a lay-in theme, which has been very popularized by a distribution out there that a lot of people are, are in love with and they, they use it and the developer's a good friend of mine. Uh, and uh, it looks like it's to have been inspired a little bit by that along with even the iconing themes and, and the plank here that's on the side. It, just a little, I, I'm looking at it as a nod of respect and a nod of, hey, we liked what you had going on. Let's it's kind of sort of emulated. I think that's what they did. So that's a good thing. If you look at the top, you got your standard XFCE panel. Over here, you have, instead of what would normally be your application launcher, you actually have your Power Session Manager. So you can log out from there. Next to that, you actually have your date and time, which is interactive. You can click on it. It'll pull up your calendar. Uh, and you can see if you have any to-dos or anything like that. Then over on the right hand side is your actual system tray, which makes better sense to me. I love this cleanest F layout because they've separated the date and time, which normally gets squashed over here with the with the system tray. And it just makes it like a conjumbled mess. And it, in that it gives you your connectivity, of course, your notifications, your volume interaction, as well as your power and battery interaction if you were on a laptop. That's it. Simple panel, clean, no pinned applications. Absolutely wonderful. Why would you need pinned applications if you have a panel at the bottom or the side? Which, let's note, let's give mad props. They took the panel. I know it's simple, and I know you can do it yourself in Linux, but it comes this way already out of the box. That means that they paid attention to detail. Take the panel, the, the plank, and put it, the dock, put it on the left. It adds way more real estate to your to your monitor and two, everything's over here on the left hand side, which you normally gravitate to instead of having to go all the way across your screen or travel all the way down to the bottom of your screen to, to get to something. You can just go right here from right here to right here. Just like that. Look at my see the see the cursor right here. Just right here to right here. Beautiful. They have U Launcher for their actual run launcher application, which is very nice, clean, neat. I love the theming of it. Everything, the theming throughout is beautiful. Here is your Power Session Grid. Now, when you open it up, you're like, whoa, that's not your typical XFCE panel. In fact, let's hit exit. Do you right click on it? You get your drop down where you can create your launchers, but there really is here where you can get your standard XFCE launcher that way as well but when you click on this this slides out bam and that is very gnome centric and if you're reading the documentation you'll see that it was kind of gnome inspired uh which is very nice so you could have the look and feel of gnome which is coming a long way now uh, as compared to what it was you have the look and feel of gnome desktop environment but on a very lightweight xfc xfce environment which is very nice Caden Live did not come installed on this, nor did OBS. I installed both of those in a test run just to make sure everything worked the way that it did. Uh, 
the applications of, of mention are very light. There's not a whole lot. So there means there's not a whole lot of bloat. They did not install an office suite of any kind, which is what I always agree with. Allow the user to install that. Maybe a PDF viewer, which they didn't. I don't even think they did that. No, there is no PDF viewer at all in here. Oh, I installed VLC, by the way. It only came with MPV. That was it. There's no PDF viewer at all in here. Uh, so there isn't that. There isn't any actual, any kind of Word document applications at all. Uh, all they have is their mouse pad, which is a, a standard XFCE text editor. Uh, and that's it. The only things that, that they've kind of added on top of it outside the bare minimum was the GNOME discs. Uh, they installed uh, Plank. No, Plank actually comes with XFCE, sorry. Uh, and that's it, really. Just a few GNOME-centric things and some, some, some tweaking it to look like GNOMEs. What they did install that I'm questionable on, and I, I mean, it's not really, it's a ticky-tacky, is this XF Burn, which is a CD burning software. Um, most of your newest equipment today, like your newer laptops, this set and other desktops, do not come with optical drives anymore. Everything's USB driven or connectivity through phone or transferring files through Wi-Fi or whatever. So that's kind of um, a relic of the past. And it's interesting that they would put that on there. Uh, but like I said, it's kind of ticky tacky. Uh, it, but being that it's XFCE, you might want to put that and, and it is one of their XFCE applications, obviously, as well, too. But, you know, if it's going on a potato laptop or an older laptop, then I could see that. But, you know, that may be something that I don't know if they could have removed or whatever. But either way, it, like I said, it's just ticky tacky. It just It's just the oddball out that stands out glaringly out of all those packages. They did install VS Codium, which is kind of cool. Once again, leaning towards developers. They use Thunar as their standard file manager, which is a standard XFCE one. And uh, they added this cool little Your System tool, which is kind of GNOME inspired as well, um, where it gives you information about your motherboard, your chipset, memory, disk, GPU, kernel, desktop, and OS. And also at the bottom, you can click on here to run a system update, which is basically going to launch the um, Rhino Package Manager update command and update your system through Packstall. Uh, they have Firefox installed, which is the standard default browser that a lot of people use, especially XFCE. Uh, and if you go to help about Firefox, it should be the most modern one. It's, and it is. It's the most up-to-date version, 116.02. 0 0.2 uh, also it goes to their web page so you can do that they do have rhino drop available if you click on that and this is where it'll create a cloud instance uh, for you to drag um, files onto it there and share uh, and send to other devices you know to send files to other devices so that is available too through their web page interface uh, I do not believe it is in an actual GUI here or application. Uh, let's see. Okay. Nope, they, it is not. So that is not available that way. You can only do it through their their website. Uh, they have their regular uh, task, uh, desktop switcher over here, which you have four virtual desktops that you can switch from, which is standard. Uh, all in all, let's take a look at the Rhino package, though. I just want to show you how that works. Now, remember, they said RPK or Rhino-PKG. Those two commands are the ones, and let's make this a little bit bigger for you guys uh, so you guys can see. Uh, those two are the ones that you would want to use, like to type it in along with the syntax. So we're just gonna go ahead, we're just gonna go with RPK and we're gonna type in install and let, let's type that correctly. Uh, let's install a G edit, see if it's available. Oh, look at that. See, it went right all the way out to apt and it's there. So what we're going to look for is G edit and let's go with number three here. You would look in and you type in number three, hit enter. Yes, of course, we're going to do this. We're going to put in our password 
and now it's going to start installing and as you can see and i'll just make this a little bit smaller so it's not so huge uh nala is installed which is a uh interface that cleans up and generates a beautiful terminal output for your package manager so there's that and now g -Ed is installed if we go to our app launcher we look in the g's you should be able to find g edit somewhere in here hmm, how about search oh shoot there it is g edit you open it up and there it is so there we could also went to the u launcher and typed in g edit Oh, look, there it is. It pulls it down right there. Bam. There it is. So, anyhow, that is a look at Rhino Linux. Positives. Rolling release version of it with Paxtal installed. And they maintain their uh, repos as a almost Nix, pace, Nix packages based, which is community driven. Uh, negative. Once again, as stated before, it's rolling release. Therefore, you could potentially subject yourself to breakage because some things may not work appropriately with your hardware. Other positive, great development team, knowledgeable. For this being the first distribution release, the inaugural, it's very well done. And I believe that it's going to go very far. A lot of people like Ubuntu. They wish they had more modern, up-to-date, newer applications and programs. So this provides that for them. It has all the package managers and management systems that you could want pretty much. So installed, all you got to do is just enable the ones that you would prefer out of the other three additional ones. And you're good to go out of the box. Uh, they've taking great care and attention to detail in the aesthetics i think that it is absolutely gorgeous looking uh i love the rhino icon that they have uh, there's just a lot of positive out of this distribution it's a rework of ubuntu but it's a very great looking and positive forward rework of ubuntu uh and it's not immutable. Imagine that. It's not immutable at all. So uh, it's great. I think the work that they've done is great. I look forward to the second release. Uh, kudos to them. If you've used it or installed it and you found anything, leave a comment down below. If you're going to, try it out. Comment down below what your experience is with it. Also, if you have any suggestions, don't forget that. Visit us on our Discord. We're very active over there. And as always, I'm going to tell you, keep doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing, stay blessed, and above all, have a great day, and I will see you in the very next video, and I look forward to you guys. Before we leave, check this out. See how I'm supported and maybe consider joining them. I think the girls with their nails done.